Yo, what is going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Hart for those of you that are new. And today I'll be breaking down this five game NBA slate here on DraftKings for Thursday night. So I'll be talking through an early look breakdown of this slate, it's kind of going game by game, talking through who I like, who I don't like, kind of different scenarios and how to attack the slate. This is like a preview to the actual slates. As always, stay updated with the injury news. I'll kind of have an early little core play. I'll throw them into the lineup. As always, the injury news changes that. So if you want up-to-date news, up-to-date core plays, you can find it in my Patreon link down below. And as I said, the write-ups will be coming back on my Patreon. Uh, they'll, be gonna, they'll be coming back on Twitter as well. So we're going to be doing a lot, a lot of content for you guys here moving forward. So stay tuned for that. Uh, apologize, no video today, but that should be back tomorrow. Uh, I got to fix a little issue with the uh, recorder. But yeah, jumping into the slates here. Recording this uh, pretty early, or only about half the games so far tonight have started. As you can see here, uh, I'd say more than half of them. A good amount of them has started, but yeah, still very early in the night. So I uh, only have three of the five games total right now. Bulls, Raptors, two points spread, 225 and a half total. Thunder, Jazz, three and a half points spread, 245 and a half total. So that's a great game total to target. And then Pacers, Kings, eight points spread, another great game total, 245 and a half there. And obviously we're missing two games. But jumping into this first game here, Chicago versus Toronto. On the Chicago side, we have Vooch at the top, 7-5. Uh, we know this offense, it, let me pull back. This offense has really changed because of that uh, Levine and the Vooch injuries that happened, uh, let's just say, the past two months. Obviously, they've been back for like a week and a half. But the past two months, it really changed the offense because Kobe White really, really stepped into a lead role for the Bulls here. Point guard, he was super, super aggressive, leading the offense, playing a ton of minutes. And it really hasn't changed too, too much. Now, I, I do expect his usage to go down a little bit uh, because obviously he's not going to have the ball the whole time in his hands with Vooch and Zach back out there. But as you can see, he's still playing a good amount of minutes, 37, 32, 38, shooting it in the multiple teens, uh, you know, has rebounding assists, block opportunity and upside. So, you know, this offense has really changed. And with that in mind, these guys do seem a little bit too cheap, but at the same time, I mean, the top four are going to be leading the offense. If you're going to go to them, uh, you know, they are cheap. I think Vooch is probably the safest just because that double-double upside. Otherwise, you know, it's going to be tough getting to DeMar there at that price tag. He's kind of pretty much the third, if not fourth option tied with Kobe White there. Uh, Zach is interesting, but it's more so a boomer bust play there. You're really, you know, hoping he goes off uh, because, you know, it's a four-headed monster right now on the Bulls with Kobe White kind of going into that lead role, lead guard role for them. Zach's taking a little bit of a step back, you know, becoming trying to become more of a playmaker, even though they might trade him soon. Uh, so yeah, right now, these are more strong secondary options because of their price tags. But once again, I think Vooch is the best, the safest. And then from there, I do think it's a toss up between Zach and Kobe. In terms of the rest of the team, I think Caruso is just a little bit too pricey for me, but he should be playing high 20s into 30s minutes. So he's fine if you do land on him for some reason. Uh, the rest of the team, they're there. I mean, these guys are questionable. Uh, they should be good to go, but obviously if they're out, we could look to some uh, very, very cheap value, like a guy like Terry Taylor, uh, if those guys get ruled out. But they should should be good to go uh, here for this game tomorrow. So nothing in terms of the secondary options for the Bulls I have interest in. Moving on to Toronto here. So they are playing tonight. Obviously going to be a back-to-back -back for them. So I guess slightly blowout risk for them, as well as you know they could change the lineup. So tonight they did... Uh, you know, run out. They obviously traded Pascal, so he's not on the team anymore. So that really changes the whole offense because we're taking a huge, huge high usage guy on the offense here, and we're going to have to apply that to different people. So obviously, Scotty's going to step up quickly, and Barrett, those are going to be the three main beneficiaries of it. But then guys off the bench, like Schroeder should be more aggressive. Uh, Gary Trent had a really good first quarter. Um, he's going to be super aggressive here. And then we could get, you know, small forward, power forward centers, guys like, you know, John Tay Porter, who has been starting has been the best, but he's been okay. But then guys like, you know, Boucher, a guy like that young, a guy like McDaniels didn't get much run. Don't know if he's got any run tonight, but that could change. You know, they could unleash him. So right now, you know, Scotty is coming in at way too cheap of a price tag with no Siakam. Same thing with Quick there at 7,000. And as much as I hate to say it, same thing with Barrett. I mean, he's been pretty solid since he's gotten to Toronto, but he's still my third favorite option. I don't love him that much at that price tag, but still he's going to step up there. Going to be more so a three-headed monster with them. Schroeder should be a solid option there at the bench uh, at 5.7 if you're looking to you know get to a pivot play off of a, a you know probably will be chalky quick there at 7,000. Um, and then in terms of the rest of the guys, I do like Gary Trent to throw in my lineup for tonight. Uh, so we'll see how he finishes out. 
but we could have some value with him. We could have some value with Thad Young, obviously Giante Porter, if he continues his starts, could be some value there. And we could look to Boucher, who's always been a pretty solid point per minute guy there off the bench. So a decent amount to like there for the Toronto side in that first game in total, even though it's not the best or highest game total. Moving on to the second game here, Washington versus New York. Obviously with Washington, just disgusting team. Hate seeing them on the slate just because they're obviously got awful, but you know, Kuzma's always a really strong contrarian option. If the game stays close, it's most likely because of Kuzma being solid. So I don't love the price tag, don't love the matchup, but if you're looking to get different, he's a solid option. Tyus Jones, kind of the same thing there. I mean, he's all over the place. 44 that last game, then 26, then 23 and a half, then 38, then 24. I mean, you you can see minutes are all over the place just because of the blots. It's six five for him. I'd rather, you know, pay down to a guy like Schroeder. Gonna be seeing the same minutes, if not the same usage. Don't think there's a need to get to Tyus Jones on the slate. Same thing with uh, Denny. Just, you know, all over the board. Can go for 51 game, can go for 20 the next. I just don't love the price tags and don't think there's a need to get to these guys, especially with the blowout risk going against the Knicks. Pool, same thing. If you're looking to get different for GPPs, I mean, we know the upside of the pool if he hits the shots, but he's been god-awful. Uh, some more so, just as a contrarian option. And then the rest of the team here, no Gafford. So we'll have to see what they do with the starting center. You know, they did get Bagley in that trade. If he starts, I think he's a really strong option at 4,000. Now, I don't know if he'll play a ton of minutes, but I would assume 20 to 25 minutes for Bagley there at 4,000. I mean, they're playing for nothing, right? So they're going to run these you know younger guys out there. So I'd have a good amount of interest in him if he does start, which I would assume he does because they really don't have any centers besides him. I mean, maybe we can get that random Anthony Gill start, but yeah, that's god awful and that's ugly. They do have livers. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, they don't really have any centers besides Gafford and now Bagley, who's on the team. So Bagley's probably going to be mega chalk, but for good reason. In terms of the rest of the guys, I mean, Corey Kispert kind of that random pop-off game when he shoots if you're looking for a very, very cheap value. But otherwise, don't like a ton there for the Washington side. Now for the Knicks side, obviously it's a very, very, very good matchup here going against Washington. You just hope this game stays close. But if it does, Randall and Brunson are both really, really strong and good options to pay up for. Um, you know, they're going to play a ton of minutes. They're going to shoot the ball a ton. We, we know what we're going to get from them. Hartenstein's been a very solid, uh, you know, center option, as you can see. Been pretty, pretty solid. Kind of averaging between, like, I'd say, 35 and 40. Fans points per game without um, Mitchell Robinson. So, I don't mind them there at 6-7. But still, I think there's better options to go to at center. Uh, I have a guy like Bagley. So, I don't know if I'll be paying for two centers on this slate. Uh, OG, as I said, there's no need to really get to him. I mean, he's fine. He plays solid minutes. He stays out of foul trouble. He'll have those random pop-off games. But at 6,000, I just think he's more so a secondary option. Uh, DiVincenzo here, 5.8K. Fine if you land on him, but his minutes and usage should go down a little bit now that they're fully healthy. Trey McBride got really priced up because Jalen Brunson missed two games there, so don't chase that. Uh, but obviously, I, I think the Knicks are playing tonight, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so it's a back-to-back. -back. Maybe they sit out Brunson if that happens. Obviously, we could look to a guy like McBride, or we could look to a guy like DiVincenzo to step up, kind of run more of that point guard role. Josh Hart uh, was good to go for the game today. So, uh, you know, one of those guys who could possibly spit out tomorrow as well. If that happens, you know, we will have some value opening up with the DiVincenzo, McBride, um, possibly even some guys down here like maybe a Quentin Grimes at 3.8. <clears throat> very, very gross. But yeah, a little bit to like here for, you know, the Knicks, depending on that back-to-back -back news. Moving on to OKC here. Um, I'd say slightly disappointing past two, perform past two performances for SGA here. SGA here. So, I don't mind going to him as a nice spend up 10.2K, get a fantastic matchup against Utah. We saw the game total of 245 and a half. So really, really, really like SGA as a bounce back spot. Chet's fine at the price tag. I, and we know we're getting from probably 35 to 40 fancy points. If he has a really good game, could go for 45 plus, uh, but you're not getting him at a discount at 7.8. So he's more so just a way to get uh, different on the slate. Same thing with Jalen Williams. Uh, been super, super strong and efficient there. If you land on him, uh, it's a solid play. Katie's more like a pool play. Uh, the minutes are all over the place, but he has really, really good upside if the game stays close. And if he can knock down a few shots, you know, he does have that triple-double upside. So if you're looking to get very different, you know, he's a very strong option at 6.2, but obviously his minutes are all over the board. Ludort really comes down to if he can get shots, uh, but otherwise, you know, I don't have much interest in him with a fully healthy team here for the uh, Thunder. Isaiah Joe, kind of the same thing. I don't think there's a need to get to any of these value guys for the Thunder, just because they play a Joe, they play uh, Kaysen Wallace, they play Kendrick Williams, uh, they've been playing some Michich as well here, so it's just not much like these guys will all get, you know, 
anywhere from seven to like 15 minutes. Nothing too crazy there. I mean, the best one would be, would be Isaiah Joe, just because he's a good shooter. So if he knocks down you know, multiple threes, he could pay off that price tag. But don't, uh, not really in love with that value there for the OKC side. On the Utah side here, I mean, I think Clarkson and Markkinen are both really, really coming in at cheap price tags. As you can see, Markkinen has a very, very good upside there. You know, if he's going to go for 20 plus points, he's usually going to be very, very strong at rebounding and again, assist as well. Uh, so it's one of those things. I, I think, you know, Mar- Laurie is way too cheap at 8.3. He's been great for me the times I've played him this season. Jordan Clarkson should be decently aggressive as well. We know the upside there with him. So I think he's a really strong option. Sexton, you know, the minutes have not been the best. They're all over the board, but he's been very, very efficient, as you can see. Uh, you know, that is just go three games ago versus Toronto. I mean, actually four games ago. 21 minutes, he put up 35 fancy points. Uh, 20 minutes, the next game, 34 and a half. 28, 39 and a half. 24, 42 and a half. 42, uh, almost 43. So he's been extremely efficient in a short amount of minutes. He's been shooting the ball very, very well uh, the past like six, seven games. He's been pretty much over 60%. Um, so I don't know if this continues, this efficiency, but if you think it does, uh, it's not a bad price to get him at 6.2. Uh, the rest of the team here, Collins there, as you can see, very, very boom or bust. Uh, I'd rather get to, um, you no, know, I'd rather get to, I'd, I'd honestly rather take a shot on Sexton over Collins. But if you if you land on him, I think it's a fine option. In terms of the rest of the team there, I mean, Walker Kessler's minutes have been very, very disappointing. Uh, Kante George's minutes have been really going down, uh, but, you know, still averaging, you know, mid twenties minutes. So nothing too crazy there, but at 4.8, he's more of an okay value. I mean, they still have Chris Dunn who will play minutes. So it's just a very gross team here because they're just playing so many guys. So they're there. If you're looking for very cheap value, you know, Kelly and Dunn are probably your best options. You know, maybe George, but that's about it. Moving on to Indiana versus uh, the Kings here. Fantastic game environment here. So if Halliburton plays, he looks like one of the best spin-ups if he's not uh, out of minutes limit. Um, I do think... I forget if... Um, I'm not sure if Pascal will be here for this game. Um, obviously, if he is, that, that does mess up this whole rotation and the whole breakdown for this Indiana side. So... I apologize if he's going to be able to get here for this game, but I will obviously, obviously have updates on Twitter. For right now, let's just say he's not going to be there. And obviously, I'll update you guys on Twitter of how I, I want to attack the, the Indiana Pacers. But Halbert and Turner, very strong options. Uh, Matherin, healed, decent. They're there, but that's really it. I mean, it really depends on if Halbert's in or out, and then if there's Pascal. And if those both those things happen, I'll update you guys on Twitter. Uh, but if, you know, if they're both in, there's really not much to like here besides kind of those top guys for Indiana, just because everyone else is pretty priced out. On the Sacramento side here, absolutely love Sabonis. Absolutely love Fox. Once again, Fox stepping it up after kind of, you know, a few disappointing games there. Three uh, for 10 fantasy points, 26 for 39. Uh, blow out there against Detroit. And then if 19 for 29, 21 for 35. Uh, but as you can see, the past two games has really stepped it up. 47 to 51. So Really, really like him here going against Halburn. You know, probably going to be a little bit of extra motivation if Halburn does play because they obviously the trade got traded away. So him and Halburn should have a great, great young guard duel. Two of the best young guards in the league, if not two of the best guards in the league. So really, really like Fox. Really, really like Sabonis. You know, Monk and Murray are those strong GPP options uh, there. You know, you, it's kind of a mixed basket of what you're going to get from them. Monk's been better recently, as you can see. Uh, been Pretty, pretty consistent with the minutes and his you know, shooting attempts. So he's a better option between him and Murray, but they're both there. They're both solid. Herter, I don't know if there's a need to get to Herter 5.2. It's really, really dependent on his minutes and his minutes really depend on if he can hit a shot. And so far the past year and a half, he hasn't been able to. So kind of like a Jordan Poole play there at 5.2 if you're looking to get to Herter. Really hope he hits his shots. Otherwise, he's going to screw you. As much as I hate to say it, I do think Harrison Barnes could be a solid value, 4.3. You know, kind of been averaging, you know, mid to high 20s, if not 30 minutes on the season. Could have a random game here or there. So if you're looking to get very weird, Harrison Barnes is your guy. Uh, you know, thankfully they dropped Trey Lyle's minutes down. I mean, he's all over the board, but usually he's a strong option. If you want to get two cheap value piece, 4.2, he's a really strong option. And then moving on to Memphis here. A lot to go over just because they are all over the board. They have so many injuries. So obviously with there being pretty much no guards on this team right now. Uh, Luke Kennard is a very strong option. He's been playing, you know, low thirties minutes, 5.3. 
Really, really good option here. More of a shooter, but he can definitely play make as well. So I think he's a strong option. So right now, let's just take out. Let's just take quickly out for now. We'll oh, just put Luke Kennard in there. Um, you know, Williams had a really good strong game there. The past two games, he's been very, very good. So 6.1, it does look too cheap for him here. Even a lot, I expect him to play minutes. He's a young guy. Uh, they don't have a ton to really go to off the bench. The guy I'm worried about is Jackson Jr. You know, if it's a close game, he should be very, very good. Very, very strong option at 7.6 because the offense is pretty much going to flow through him and uh, Kennard there. But obviously, this game gets out of hand. He's going to be the first guy they pull. Uh, so that's the issue there. But yeah, as you can see, he's going to be super aggressive when he's out there. 20 shots in the past three games. So it really just depends. He's a great option if you think this game stays close. Probably one of the best plays on the site. But if this game, uh, any sort of blowout, he's going to screw you at that price tag. Um, Tillman's fine. You know, playing solid minutes. Decently productive as well. 5.5K. A little bit of interest in him. Roddy should see some uh, solid minutes. I'd rather get to the other guys. Same thing with Santi. Uh, you know, should be a strong option as a value option down there. Gilliard played, um, you know, decent minutes. So we get some uh, options there, some value options with him. Dyer Williams, as you can see, they're just going to play a ton of guys, a ton of minutes. Gigi Jackson has been the probably best out of the guards so far the past two games. I'm sure everyone will go to him over like a Gilliard. Uh, but obviously, he, he did pretty much did not miss a shot the past two games. So that, that really helps there. But yeah, he's coming off the bench. So it's not a guarantee that he sees the minutes, but he's been super, super strong. And with how depleted they are, I think he's probably going to see a ton, a ton of minutes there. Uh, they're going to let him get a ton of runs. So I think he's a very, very strong option. And they did add Scotty Pippen Jr. So that could be a thing where he might get a start. What we'll to see about that? But yeah, lots of like here for the Memphis just because they're super, super shorthanded. Um, so wouldn't it be surprising if two, maybe even three Memphis Grizzlies into, in, end up in the winning lineup? And then moving on to Minnesota here, back to back, they're playing tonight. So there could be a chance they do roll it out like Anthony Edwards or Carl Towns, maybe even a go bear. Uh, so this could be a game that we might fall on stack if that happens, because a lot to like there on the Memphis side. And then if one of these or two of these, you know, main guys for the Grizzlies gets ruled out, a lot to like here on the, excuse me, on the Minnesota side, then a lot to like here on the Minnesota side. So that's just the news there. If, you know, these guys all play, uh, obviously, they're coming at very cheap price tags, Anthony Edwards and Carl Towns, but obviously, you worry about the blowout risk. But if that happens, you know, one of them should get there. I prefer getting to Anthony Edwards. Uh, but yeah, I mean, him and Towns look fantastic. Gobert's fine. And then the rest of the team, no interest in them. But obviously, if, you know, if Gobert gets rolled out, I would assume they probably slot in like a McDaniels or um, I would say McDaniels or Nas Reed. They both look, excuse me, they'd slot in. Uh, Cal Anderson or Nas Reed, they both look like really strong options at as value. Um, if they rule out like Anthony Edwards or Carl Towns or both, you know, in terms of offense, a guy, excuse me, like Cal Anderson would really, really be strong. Same thing with Nas Reed. And then same thing for a guard, maybe like a McLaughlin. So a lot to pay attention to. And it's the last game. So we could really build around the news that potentially those guys are out. If you want to do that, you've gained a ton of leverage in terms of ownership uh, against everyone else. So, that could be a very strong option there to, you know, game stack that game. You could also game stack the Indiana Sacramento game. If those guys all play. But yeah, this should be a very, very fun and interesting slate just because there's a ton of cheap options, a ton of options across the board uh, that are very cheap, a lot of value opening up. So you can easily go with the Stars and Scrubs. You can easily go with the mid range. Any sort of mix is good for tomorrow. So I hope you guys liked the video. Hit that like button. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.